first of all, I'd just like to echo what Neil said. You know, what a great day for uh, Kentucky and our program. You know, there's a lot of people that helped us get where we were today, and I want to thank the administration for all they did. I, I, I also want to thank the wives, not just Neil, thank the wives. Can you guys put that in front of me? I also thank the wives okay, today, and I'm very excited about this class. Can you think to uh, the Tubman recruitment and what all you thought impressed them besides yourself and what you were selling? What, what do you think turned it? Um, I think that um, it just took time for him to see what what we had to offer and, and uh, what was the best future for him. And uh, when he sat down and looked at everything, I think it was you know the right thing for him to do, and, and uh, he made that leap. DJ, when you all came, you were strictly kind of a four-three reputation. How much did you sell the fact that you were a little more multiple last year than you expected? Yeah, I sold it to everybody that we're our multiple teams right now, and, um, that we run three, four schemes and four, three schemes, and, and, and we do a lot of different things, and that's where we evolved to last year, and that's what we're going to build on this year. Is that the fact that you did run some three, or some three men, is that really important with Matt Elam? Uh, I think Elam liked that it was multiple. You know, I think all these guys on defense like the fact that they're going to learn how to play um, within different schemes that uh, can you know help develop them for the future. With Matt, how big was it? I don't know if it's a statement or just see how significant is it to you to doubt Alabama and some of the other especially Alabama with Matt? Well, yeah, you're right. It's a good statement, and um, you know it's big for us. But the best thing about it is that we needed Matt. You know, so regardless of who we were going against, it, it, it was just such a good gift for us because it built a need. I feel very good about the linebacker uh, signees that we got. Um, we did have a high need there, losing Avery. Um, you know, we needed to be able to fill some holes there. And we signed one junior college linebacker, uh, Ryan Flanagan, and then three good high school backers, too, that we can develop and bring along. Dorian Hendricks talked about meeting with Avery a little bit and, and kind of getting used to, you know, the things he needs to know. How much has Avery been helpful with that, even though he's left the program, obviously? And is that a position you can step into as a freshman? You know, Avery continues to be amazing. You know, he's, he's done playing, but he's still working out here. And he meets with the kids, and he, he, he mentors the kids. And, and, and like you said, he's, he's telling some of those young backers what it takes to be a great linebacker. And I think, you know, depending on the player, sometimes you can step up and play as a freshman and be successful. What, what about the secondary? How did you feel like you did there? I felt like we did very well. Um, you know, two great safeties that we signed uh, from the state of Ohio, excellent players, um, guys that uh, have ability to, to be stout run stoppers but can also cover um, three corner type bodies, guys that can run, can change direction, um, that are long. We're very excited about all five of those guys. Have any recruiting stories like Neil did? Anything disastrous happened? I, I don't have any that compare to that one, that's for <laughs> sure. I mean, that, that's going to go down. He's going to tell his grandkids about that one. You know? So I don't have anything like that. Mark mentioned that one of the things with Elam and with the other defensive linemen that you and Mark and Coach Grumbaugh, your Pete Jenkins disciple type guys, you're on the same page, teach the same technique. How important do you think it was to those guys? Well, I think all defense alignment want to know, can they be developed? And can they be developed into great college players and then have a chance to play at the next level? So we have to prove that to each one of them that come in here. And how we do it, we show them that, but then we also show them how we've done it. So that, that is a big part of getting all the defense alignment that we signed. Were you surprised at how quickly Elam got this is starting to look like it's coming together. I mean, Mark said that if he's honest, he, you know, he maybe was a little bit surprised at how well you guys did this year. Now all I have to do is give you a, a different answer than Neil and Mark, right? And sure. Because this was a question that was asked all three. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, Neil, Neil probably understood Kentucky better than Mark and I did before we stepped in here. So uh, Mark and I probably are a little surprised, but. We, we were always optimistic that we could do great things here. DJ, 
Jim, what are your expectations for Corey Johnson? I think uh, you know Corey's got a chance to play right away. He had a tremendous uh, junior college career. He's uh, he's got very good change of direction and burst for his size. And uh, he's a guy that's in here right now working. He's going to learn the scheme. He's training with our strength and conditioning coaches. So I think he's got a good chance to play right away. You have a question for Coach Elliott? As you're competing with <laughs> traditional powers, does the ability to play right away have an enormous advantage for you, if you can offer that? I think, uh, you know, Every player that we recruit, we, we tell them all that, you know, no job is given to anybody. Every job is going to be earned. And, um, you know, I think that those kids understand that, but they also see that, uh, you know, this program is built for the future, and they can come in here and be a hero. Am I good? All right, thank you very much.